one thing is before you do the AC method, before you force yourself to do the AC method, you ask yourself, well, do they or do I have a common divider between a four, a 16 and a 48? Meaning, is there a GCF? Can I take anything out? Meaning, do you agree that I can take out a four, right? Because four can go in four one time and left me with X square. Four can go in 16 four time and that will let me with X and four can go 48 12 time. Because again, if you multiply this thing in, if you multiply this thing in, everybody see that if you multiply the four times x square, you will get x square, four x square. Four times four x, you will get 16 x, and four times 48, you will get a 12, right? And now you make your problem, you make your factoring problem a little bit easier. Now, the only thing we need to do is factor the item inside your, inside your parentheses. And in, inside your parentheses, hopefully, let me rewrite the item inside my parentheses. As you can see, inside your parentheses, this is an easy problem. We create this by factor out a GCF. Why is it an easy problem? Because there is no number in front of x squared, right? Now you just ask yourself, is there two number multiplied to give you negative 12, but subtract to give you four. And in this case, do you agree that six times two is 12? And six minus two will give you four. But in this case, the six is negative. So again, when you factor this thing out, when you factor this thing out, everybody see that all we need to do is, the reason why is an easy problem because all we need to do is put in an X in one parenthesis, X in the other parenthesis and put in negative six and a two. And yes, don't forget to bring down your four because whatever you factor out, you have to carry, carry it down, right? So again, the answer for this particular problem, the answer for this particular problem is four on the outside, x minus six, x plus two, or if you have four, x plus two, x minus six is per perfectly fine. But this is what we need to do. How do we get to the easy problem? The only reason you can get to the easy problem is you can factor out a, a GCF, okay? So that's the idea, right? We put this, we, we did this before we, we did problem in 6.2. We have a GCF, we factored it out. It's just that it's been a long time. I, I wanna give it back to you guys so that you guys can do it. Um, if whoever did the AC method, if you took the four times the 48, um, you still can do it. It's just that it's a humongous number, right? Uh, and that's the problem with the, the AC method. If you take four, if you take four, multiply to 48 or multiply to a negative 48, everybody see that this thing will give you 192, negative 192, right? And, and then you say, well, there are two number multiply to give you negative 192, but subtract to give you 16, which is, is, is you know, it, it's doable. It's just that it's a little bit, it's a little bit um, tedious in that way, okay? But looking at this thing here, question with A. If you don't have question with A, B, uh, with a small error there, if we were to, or if you guys were to change it to this problem, then you guys would be able to, to figure this out, hopefully, right? So this is my B problem. My B problem is 25 X squared minus 40 X plus 16. And I want to point out that, you know, I, I won't be, if you do this thing here, you say, well, Mr. Tran just told me that I can take out, try to take out GCF first, and, and that's correct, right? see if we can take out a GCF. And in this case, you can see that there's no GCF. The phi can go to 25 and can go to 40, but the phi cannot go into 16. So we cannot take out a phi. And vice versa, a four can go into 40 and can go for 16, but a four cannot go into 25. So in this case, we kind of stuck, right? And if you stop and, and you say, well, this is a hard problem which is the AC method. And if it's and if the AC method, you would say, well, 25 
times 16, and if you take 25 times 16, you will get 400, right? 25 times 16, you get 400. And now you ask yourself, well, is there two number multiply to give you 400, but add together to give you 40? And again, I, the reason why I mentioned this is, is I want to show you that, yes, the AC method is work out. It's just that it's tedious or in the sense that the number is humongous and, and you kind of you know, intimidated and you kind of forget it in, in, in that case. But again, 20, you know, looking at this thing here, I, I don't want to do this thing here, but again, 20 times 20 is 400 and 20 plus 20 with the correction will give you 40, right? But I don't want to emphasize the AC method. I want to emphasize the other problem or understand that remember there is a perfect square scenario, right? So when you see this humongous problem, when you see this big problem, uh, or when you multiply and get you, you some humongous number, go the other route, ask yourself this question, is this a perfect square, right? Is this number a perfect square? And is this number a perfect square? So in this case, do you see that 25 X square is a perfect square? And if a 25 X square is a perfect square, why is a perfect square? Do you agree that 25 X square is 5X times 5X? And 16 is a perfect square. And why is 16 is a perfect square? Well, 16 is four times four. So if you get to this humongous number or some big number, see if they are a perfect square. And if you recognize that the first item is a perfect square and the last item is a perfect square, all you need to do is put them in, take one of each. And in this case, my one of each is 5x and four, 5x and four, put them in each of the parentheses, and in this case, because it's a trinomial, they will have both the same sign. So again, this is what we have is 5x minus four times 5x minus four. And if you in doubt, if you in doubt, you can test, check this out, right? We don't need to take the 5x times the 5x. We already know that 5x times 5x is 25. We don't need to test the four times the four because the four times the four is the 16. Right? What do we need to test is we need to take this number, negative four times five, that will give me a negative 20, and five times this to give me a negative 20. And as you can see, a negative 20 and a negative 20, that will give me 40, which is that is the number that I needed in the, in the center. So in the center, this is your perfect square scenario, and your perfect square scenario is basically tell you that this is the square of the difference because 5x minus 4 times 5x minus 4 is basically 5x minus 4 square. Okay. And again, you don't need to put 5x minus 4 square. You can give me this answer and that will be perfectly, perfectly fine. Okay. But again, this is the idea is when you get some humongous number, and again, as you will see that we slowly, slowly progress or process uh, to the harder problem. But again, if you get some humongous number, go the other route, right? If you cannot take the GCF, see if it's a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square scenario, most likely it will follow under this criteria. If it's a trinomial, you need two parentheses and whatever in your two parentheses, they are the same. If it's a binomial, meaning if it's C, if we look at C, if it's a binomial, then there are a other unique perfect square binomial, right? So how do we factor out a C or how do we do this item? Well, you know, or you look at this item here, we know that 81 X squared is a perfect square. And in this case is nine X times nine X. We know that 47, not 47, 49 is a perfect square because it's seven times seven. And because it's a binomial reminder, what is the difference between the binomial perfect square versus a trinomial perfect square? Well, the binomial perfect square, we still take one of each and put in the parentheses. The only thing different with the 
binomial is one of them is positive, the other one is negative. That's what the binomial perfect square versus the trinomial versus the trinomial perfect square. Okay, so in the sense, if you remember up here, I, 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 if you remember up here, this is what I have, is we have 5x minus 4, 5x minus 4, both of them are the same because it's a binomial. If down here, because it's, a, I mean trinomial, sorry, because it's a trinomial down here for C, this is a binomial and the binomial force you to have one positive and one negative because the middle term will dis disappear, okay? So again, looking at B and C, this is the special product in section 5 6.5. Uh, you can look over 6.5 for this special product. We spent a lot of time with C. We did not spend that much time in B, uh, but again, um, we will spend, um, you can look over those, uh, those items. Uh, question with A, B, or C here, ladies and gentlemen. So if you don't have question, let's take a look at D. And hopefully you guys say that D, or hopefully you guys can do D uh, and not pram. Right. So let's take a look at D. And again, this is what we have in D in terms of y squared minus 19y plus 48. And again, hopefully don't get the y discourage you. Right. So looking at this item, is this an easy problem or a hard problem? Right. That's what you want to ask yourself. And again, hopefully you guys say that this is an easy problem. And why is it an easy problem? Because there is no number in front of the in front of the y square or in front of my square term. So there's no number, it's an easy problem. I just need to dissect the 48. I just need to dissect the 48 and ask myself, is there two number multiplied to give me 48, but add together to give me 19. And in this case, hopefully you guys spend some time and you guys dissect and you guys say that three times 16 is 48 and three plus 16 is 19, right? And again, once you dissect or once you find that, all you need to do is put in one of each, which is we break down my Y and we put the 16 and the three. And because we think in terms of addition, they need to have the same sign. And hopefully you guys remember that they both will be negative because of the 19 is negative. If the 19 is positive, then they will be both positive because again, in order for you to add, in order for you to add, they need to have the same sign. And in this case, whatever the side of meter term is, they will take this, that sign. And that is all there is in terms of the, in terms of the, the D item. This is all that they ask you. And that is why I keep on saying, identify if it's a hard problem or easy problem, right? So again, probably, hopefully you guys say, oh, I want to see, I want to do a lot of, of, of D, right? Problem I want. And again, you will see a, a hefty amount of, of D material, okay? So here come the last five problem. This is where I stopped yesterday. And this is where I want to focus in. in. And, and, and I know some of you guys still have problem with this item. So that's why I, I put, uh, five of them up here so that we can do uh, together, right? So looking at E, if we working with E, and E, this is what we have is 16x squared plus 19x plus three. And if you look at E, you will say, well, I cannot, hopefully you guys say that you cannot take out any number. You cannot make this thing smaller, right? There's nothing you can do in terms that there is no common, there is no common factor between a 16, the 19, and the three. So because there is no GCF, there is no GCF, we are forced to do an AC method. So the AC method to remind for those of you guys 
the AC method, this is what we do is we take the A item and in our, our term, our A item is the first item and my C item is the last item. I take the A multiply to the C. And if I take the A multiply to the C, do you agree that 16 times three to give me 40, 48. And again, if you look at all the problem, I use a lot of 48 so that you can, can see the pattern, right? So again, 48, once we find the 48, what do we need to do? Well, we need now, we need to find two number, multiply to give me 48, but add together to give me 19. And hopefully you guys say, oh, Mr. Strand, you don't need to look any further. The two number you just multiply to give you 48 is the same two number that add together to give you 19 because 16 plus three, that's 19, right? But why this problem is not easy as before is because once you find a multiple, you cannot just do this, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the same item, right? You cannot just say, okay, I find a multiple, 16 and three, I put in one of each parenthesis like, like the previous one, is not the case, it's not that easy, right? What we identify is hard. So again, how do we do this thing here? Because once you identify it like this, once you find a multiple, this is what you need to do is you need to rewrite a problem. Instead of say 19, you will say 16x plus 3x. You need to rewrite this problem and factor them out in terms of grouping, right? So we need to rewrite a problem. This is my problem. This is my original problem. 16x squared plus 19x plus three. That's my original problem. But now instead of using that original problem, the only thing I need to do is now I need to rewrite it, break down the 19 as in 16x and the three x. And once I have that, all I need to do is group them up. And if I group them up, the first group, the first two number, the second two number in the second group. And again, what do I have? Between the 16 and the 16, I know that I can take out 16. Between the x squared and the x, I can take out a an x. And 16 going to 16 is one time, and x going to x squared will give me an x. 16 going to 16 is one time. Everything is out. I still have to put the one to hold that place. And similarly, in the second group, because I include a positive, I need to factor out a positive. And again, in this case, I take out a positive three. So three going to three will give me an X and three going to three will give me one time. And hopefully you guys say that, oh, X plus one and X plus one is the same. I bring it to the outside. And what is the leftover? The leftover is 16 plus three. So this is our answer. It's not the answer if you recognize or not recognize. If you remember what I wrote earlier, this is what I wrote earlier. And as you can see, clearly they are not the same. Right, And again, you, you can see that you are wrong because 16 times three, that's 48. Your original problem does not have any 48 in it. Right, Your original problem is 16 and three. So that's why we cannot use the easy method for the hard problem. You have to use the hard method and it's not hard, right? It's tedious, but it's not hard. You have to use the hard method for the hard problem. So again, in terms of this thing here, and, and I, you know, I purposely, give you, I purposely give you this item right here. If you see that 48, 48, and then the three times the, the 16 is 48. So all of them, you know, try to give you see that 48 might be the core number, but it's not the same all the time. You have to ask yourself in terms of what kind of problem we have. Um, so question here with E, question here with the step, with the AC method, or question here in terms of how do we defer the difference between the E versus the D? So if you don't have a question, let's take a look at F, G, and H. Well, take a look at F first. G, H, and I, if you look at it, it's very, you know, all of them is the same, but let's take a look at F, right? We've done the first four items. So F, this is what we have. We have 12 X squared minus 17 X, plus six. And again, can we, is there any GCF? Is there any GCF, ladies and gentlemen? 
And again, 17 is a prime number. Uh, probably there's no GCF, right? So if there's no GCF, we all kind of force, right? Our hand or tie. If there's no GCF, we need to do the AC method. And the AC method tell me take the A item, multiply to the C item. So the AC method tell me that 12 times six will give me 72. And again, the 72 will be positive. And that is very key. If it's positive, we have to think in terms of addition. So in this case, 12 times six to give me 72 and the 72 is positive. So now I have to ask myself, is that two number multiplied to give me 72, but add together to give me 17. And hopefully if you spend the time, like I said, if you in doubt, right? If you don't know, if you don't know, just list them out. Some of you or, or, or half of you guys probably saw it. Half of you guys probably say, oh, Mr. Tran, eight times nine is 72 and eight plus nine is 17. That's what you have, right? If, but if you don't see it, if you don't see it like, like that, then don't just stare at the problem, ladies and gentlemen, just list your multiple out, right? You know, take, take 72 divided by two, right? 72 divided by two, your calculator can help you 72 divided by two to give you 36, 72 divided by three, you know, 70 divided by two to give you 24, right? 72 divided by four will give you 18. Um, 72 divided by five will not give you anything. Well, it's give you some decimal, we don't need it. 72 divided by six, we have our original, the six and the 12. And then 72 divided by seven will not work out. 72 divided by eight to give you nine. And again, like I keep on mentioning, the next number will be nine times eight, which is if you repeat it, if you repeat it, meaning there is no other multiple. This is the only multiple of 72, the only even multiple of 72 that you can get, right? And now with this group of, of item, which two number add together to give you 17, we see that we, again, some of you saw in the beginning, but if you don't, like I say, if you don't, don't just stand at the problem, just list them out. And again, because we think in terms of addition, everybody see that we have negative AX and a negative 9X because a negative number and a negative number, I have to add them up and keep the sign. So negative seven, I'm a negative eight, and a negative nine, that will give me a negative 17 when I add them or when I combine them. So once I do that, once I do that, this is what I have. I have to rewrite my problem. I have to rewrite my problem and bring down my, bring down my number, right? So I have the 12 X square in the front, the six in the back. And once I have this thing here, I need to group the first two and group the second two. Again, all this thing here is the same. Multiply the A times the C, find a multiple, rewrite the problem, factor out by grouping. So in the first group, what can you take out? Two is okay, but four is better, right? Four can go to 12 and four can go to eight. So if you take out a two, you will have a little bit less of what you needed. So we need to take out a four, because four go to 12 is three time and I have an X and four going to eight is two time, right? In the second group reminder, because you include a negative, you need to take out a, a negative. So because we include a negative here, we need to check our negative, which is negative three. And a three going to nine will give me three because negative go to negative become positive. And negative three going to six will give me a negative two. And again, our purpose, our problem is the parenthesis got to be, have to be, must be the same. And if I took out the parenthesis, the parenthesis is gone. What is the leftover? The leftover will be four X minus three. And that or this is our answer, ladies and gentlemen. So again, question here in the sense of, of how to start, where to start and how the result is. Let's take a look at the next item. G, 
And again, I purposely give you G, I purposely give you G, H, and I as the same, or not the same, but similar number. So if you look at G, if you look at G, this is what you have. And you no, know, like I mentioned, this is a pro and this is the con. There's always a pro and there's always a con for any method we're using, right? Uh, the guessing method, the con was I cannot teach you how to guess, right? Uh, you basically have to plug it in and, and test it out and keep on trying. Uh, that's the try and error. This one here, the pro is I can show you step by step. The con is this item here. Um, if you take 33 and four, if you take this two number and you multiply, this is where the tedious part or this is where the problem come in is, do you agree that 33 times four to give you 132? And now how do we looking for you like, wow, 132 and the 33 times four is a positive. So now I need to look in for two number that add together, multiply to give me 132, but add together to give me 37, All right? So again, if you don't see the multiple, list them out. Have your calculator, you can use your calculator, list them out. Uh, you know, it's taking you probably five minutes, but at least you know what to do. At least you know that this is what you have to do is you know that one time 132, that's easy. You take 132 divided by two, I can divide by two because any even number, any even number I can divide by two, right? Which is um, this thing will give me 66. I can take 132 divided by three and this thing will give me 44. I can take 132 divided by four, this thing will give me 33. 132 divided by five will not give you an even number. 132 divided by six, that will give you 22. 132 divided by seven would not give you an even number. 132 divided by four, uh, eight will not give you an even number. Uh, 133 divided by nine would not give you an even number. 132 divided by 10 would not give you an even number. 132 divided by 11 will give you 12. And then the next number, like I mentioned, the next number is 132 divided by 12 to give you 11. You can see that they, they start to repeat it. Meaning if they start to repeat it, this is the multiple that I have. Those are the only multiple that I can get in terms of the whole number. Those are only multiple that I can multiply to give me 132 which the two even uh, the whole number, right? So once we have this, let's focus back to our problem. Once we have this, we ask ourselves, is that two number multiplied to give me 132, but add together, right? Do we, does any of this thing here, can we add them together to give us 37? And hopefully you guys say, oh, there is Mrs. Tran, Magically, that is because four times 33 will give you 132. And four plus 33 will give you 37, right? So looking at this thing here, all we need to do is you need to rewrite this problem. And doesn't matter, uh, you can put the four first and you can put the 33 second. Uh, it, it doesn't matter which way you put it. Uh, I can put this thing here like this. You can put 33 in the beginning and 4x in the back, it's fine. But let me ask you, what is the sign? What is the sign for 33 and what is the sign for four? Well, what do we looking for? We're looking for a negative, everybody see that we're looking for a negative 37 and to get a negative 37, do you agree that they have to be both negative? Negative 4x and a negative 33x. And again, negative time and negative will give me a positive and a negative, negative, I combine them and kept the sign, okay? And now what do I need to do? Well, I need to bring my 33 X squared down. I need to bring my four down. And once you have this thing here, all we need to do is group the first two, group the second two. And if I group the first two, 
between a 33x squared and a 4x, what can you take out? Well, you can take out an x and that's all you can take out, which is an x minus four because 33 and four have, does not have a common divider. And between a negative 33 and four, what can you take out? Well, uh, because you include a negative, you need to take out a negative. And if they don't have anything that you can take out, well, you can take out a negative one because a negative going to a negative will give me a positive and a negative go to a positive will give me a negative. And like I mentioned, reminder, ladies and gentlemen, the thing in your parentheses have to be, must be the same. And in this case, they are the same 33X minus four. And what is the leftover? If I took this item out, the leftover will be X minus one. And that, is our answer 33x minus four and x minus one, okay? So that's the idea here, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and the idea I give you with H and I is the same. Uh, 132 is the number. And then see if you can find a combination that add together to give you 23. See if you can find the two number that subtract to give you 41, okay? Um, but first of all, G, G, question with G here. I will ask you guys to do H and I by yourself. Uh, we can pick up on this tomorrow. Let's take a look at this thing here. Let me connect all of this together. So you will say, wait a minute, Mr. Tran. Uh, yesterday we, we saw, right? Why today we go back to factor? So if you look at example two, example two, they ask you, example two, they ask you to solve. And if you look at this thing here, is the exact, the exact uh, nine problem that you have prior. The only thing different, the only thing different, hopefully you guys see that the only thing different is each of the question is equal to zero, right? That's the only thing different now is the problem is exactly the same. The only thing different is now they have an equal to zero. And if, when there is an equal to zero, you need to solve. So let me do this item here. And, and again, let me ask you, if we were to solve, let's take a look at the first item, right? The first item, we factored this thing out last time, right? Without the, if, <laughs> without the zero, everybody see that if you look at your, your, your answer, if you look at your answer, uh, on the on the other side, this is your answer last time, which is four or parentheses x plus uh, x minus six x plus six. I mean x plus two, right? The only thing different or the only thing new is now if they ask you to solve, everybody see that if they ask you to solve, the only thing new is now is equal to is equal to zero. And now if it's equal to zero, what is new? Well, if it's equal to zero, ladies and gentlemen, this is your item. This is what your factor is, x minus six, no, x plus six, x minus six, x plus two. So I want to point out to you guys is solving quadratic is nothing new. You factor them out first. And the only thing that they tell you to do is if they ask you to solve is you take this item and you set it equal to zero, you take this item and you set it equal to zero. And if you set it equal to zero, meaning now you have one problem and you have two different problem, how do you solve? How do you get X by itself? Well, to get X by itself, do you agree that I need to add six to this side? Therefore, my answer is X is equal to six, one answer. Right, and I need to subtract two to the other side. Therefore, this is what I have is X equal to negative two. This is my other answer. So again, I have two answer in term of this number here. So that's all that you need to do is if you can factor, if you can factor them out and all of this thing here is the answer is the factor that we did prior to this problem, all of this is the factor. All you need to do is take each of your parentheses, they ask you to solve, take each of your parentheses and set it equal to, set it equal to zero. 
and that's the connection of 6.6 .6 to the to the previous one. Okay, so again, um, I am running out of time. Um, see if you can do this item here. See if you can solve this item, uh, and and work on H and I. See if you can do that that hard problem, that AC method and humongous number. See if you can do that uh, tonight, work on those. And look over your homework, ladies and gentlemen, look over your homework, look over your,